When can personal conveyance time be used? This is FMCSA Compliance Q&A from Acrisure Truck Group. Take it away, Mark. So another area that comes into concern and could be false records of duty status, the number one violation across the United States currently right now. Some of that has been, at least previously, and is now being separated out statistically, is the improper use of personal conveyance. So I'm gonna just mention those areas of where personal conveyance is allowed. And it's a nice benefit to the carrier uh, and the driver to have some free time when they're down uh, at a rest period or at a loading or receiving location. So as long as that driver is from leave, relieved from work and all responsible for performing the work, the driver has the ability to go to such things as in route lodgings, to restaurants, if they have a certain movie or a theater or something they want to go to, entertainment facility, they would have the ability to use that CMV to go there. Also, they have the ability under parent two to commute between the driver's terminal and his or her residence, and including between trailer drop lots and the driver's residence, and also between work sites and the residence. And we'll talk about work sites. Primarily, the work sites have a lot more to do with the construction industry. But in those, what they kind of say is you do have the ability. So if I have a tractor trailer operation, I drive daily, I bobtail from my home to my pickup or terminal location, hook to the trailer, deliver freight, come back to that terminal, drop that trailer and bobtail home. That bobtail time coming to the terminal and leaving the carrier's terminal can be considered personal conveyance as technically off duty time. But in the case of the terminal, it must be the carrier's terminal. In addition, one of the newest and probably one of the best things that occurred in the personal conveyance is that the driver has the opportunity to drive to a reasonable, safe location to obtain rest after loading or unloading, even though they may have run out of, out of hours of service at that shipper or receiver. They'll have the ability at the end of the day, they're at the shipper receiver, they're out of hours, they can complete any post-trip requirements and then go off duty and go to the nearest safe location. When I say nearest, it might be further away from the next destination or it might be closer to the next destination, but it must be the nearest one. In that case, they have the opportunity to log that as off duty time. And again, it must be the first such location reasonably available to the driver. Also, there's the ability that if a driver is legally parked at a location and a law enforcement officer knocks on the door and asks that driver to move his or her truck, movement required by safety officials can be called off-duty personal conveyance. Meaning if I was six hours into my sleep break time, I get the knock on the door from a law enforcement officer asking me to move the truck due to some emergency situation in the area, I don't have to wreck my whole 10 hour rest break in my sleep birth period. I can now go from a sleep of birth into on duty to off duty time and move that vehicle to the next safe place and stay in the off duty status or resume sleep of birth, whichever I wish, and it will not affect that 10 hour period off. There's always had the ability for drivers to transport personal property when off duty. If I owned a straight truck and I wanted to move a friend or move my own personal belongings from one residence to the next, it's not in the furtherance of commercial enterprise that can be considered personal conveyance or off-duty time. 